In the final lesson of this course, we'll put together everything that we've learned to create a finished painting. So let's go ahead and explore my digital art workflow. The first thing I'd like to do is go to the window menu and go to layouts. And I'm just gonna reset my layout to the drawing and painting layout. I'll just put things where I want them so that I'll be comfortable while I'm working. And then we can go ahead and create a new canvas. Now you could really use any canvas size that you like, but I prefer to use standard print and frame sizes. Doing this will ensure that your artwork will fit on a print or in a frame. But if you're not going to be printing your artwork, then you can choose a size that fits nicely on a screen. Let's say we're going to print this piece. I'm gonna make it 10 inches wide by eight inches tall, and I'll set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. This is a standard resolution for printing. I'm not gonna tone the canvas, and I'm not really gonna worry about paper color because we'll be changing that while we're painting. We can give our image a title if we want. We'll be painting a space scene, so we can just give it a name. I'm gonna be saving iterations of this, so I'll just call it space one. And let's go ahead and create our canvas. I'm gonna create a new layer right off the bat, and I'll name it stars. We're gonna paint the black void of space on the canvas layer, and we'll paint the stars on the stars layer. And we'll be adding more to this composition as we go along. If you already know what you're gonna be painting, it can be helpful to break down your painting into the individual objects as layers. So for example, I could add a planets layer, or a comet layer, or a nebula layer, or a UFO layer. Then I don't have to interrupt my workflow by naming layers. We'll go to the canvas layer, and this will just be our bottommost layer. I'm gonna select an almost black color. We'll shift it toward the indigo hue, and I'll press Control F on my keyboard to fill that layer with that color. Now space isn't just black nothingness, there's gas and all kinds of stuff floating around. So let's put some of that in. Let's go to our particle brushes and let's try Spring Silk Flower. I'm gonna make my color just a bit brighter. And with a really big brush, we'll just paint in something just kind of freeform like this. We're not gonna think too much about it. We'll just put it in. Next, I'll select a purplish color and I'll put in some of that. And let's blend that a little bit with a blender. Let's try Particle Spring Loaded Knife. Make a medium sized brush here. And I'll just paint circular strokes like this using pretty firm pressure. And that'll just blend it up, but it'll still be kind of random. I don't have to worry about over blending it because it's a pretty weak blender. But I wanna just go over everything here, and just make this look like gas floating in outer space. I'm gonna to switch to another blender called Diffuser One. With a bigger brush, I'll just diffuse it a bit more here and there. Use a smaller brush over that. And I think that looks pretty good for the background. We'll go to the stars layer now. Let's set the stars layer composite method to screen. Anything that's glowing typically works better set to screen. And let's switch to a different brush in the airbrushes category called fine spray. For our color, we'll choose kind of a warm off white like this. And rather than drawing with my pen, I'm just gonna click and drag with my mouse all the way across the canvas Make sure I cover everything. And if I zoom in, you can see this creates a lot of very fine stars. You can reduce the opacity of that layer if it's a bit too strong. Something like that looks pretty good. I'm gonna to switch to another brush that is called Coarse Spray Jitter. And this time I'm gonna to switch to kind of a cyan color, but still very close to white. And just like before, I'll click with my mouse. I don't wanna to put too many on here. That'll just give me some larger stars. And I'll select another brush called Variable Splatter. Make my brush very large and just click again a few times to put in some larger stars. Be careful not to overdo it because you want there to be fewer larger stars than smaller stars. I'm gonna create another layer. We'll call this Glow and I'll set the composite method to screen. I'm gonna select a brush in the effects category that is called Glow. And I'll zoom in here so I can see some of these stars a bit more closely. And I'm gonna select a very dark color. Let's say a dark blue like this. And with that glue brush, I'm gonna size my brush about the size of the halo that's going to surround the star. And I'll just tap right there in the center. And I'm just wiggling my pen around in a very small circle. As you can see, that makes the star glow. I'll do that on another one over here. Just doing a really small wiggling gesture. If I make my brush larger, then I can get a much larger glow that spreads out more. So you'll wanna do a little bit of each for some of these stars. This will take some time to complete, but you don't have to do every single star. 
You can also change your color if you like to something that's on the opposite side. So we'll have kind of an orangish color to make some of these glow a different color. And every now and then you can have one really big one if you want to have a nice focal point. So just make that one glow a lot. You can have another focal point here, make this one glow a lot. You could also make a very small brush and then hold shift to draw a straight line. And you can do a little flare like this on some of these if you really want them to stand out. Just try to make sure that's centered and zoom in if you need to. I'm not going to finish all these stars and just skip ahead a little bit here so we can see all the steps in this process. It might be nice to have a planet floating out here in outer space. So let's create a new layer. I'll name it planet. And we can draw a nice perfect circle using our selection tool. So I'm going to drag out a circle and then hold down shift. If you're not sure which size to make your planet, it's better to make it large than small. So let's just make it large for now, and then we can shrink it down later if we need to. The position doesn't really matter because we can just move the layer around. So let's just choose a really dark gray for now, and we'll fill it with that. Because you can easily change the color of a layer, you don't have to worry about getting the color right the very first time. The most important thing I want to get here is the value. So I can check the value by creating a new layer, and I'll name it value. I'll fill it with black, and I can set the composite method either to colorize or to color to check the value. So I want this planet to be dark enough to where it blends into the scene, but it doesn't completely blend into the background to where I can't see it. So we could make it a bit darker by going to Effects, Tonal Control, Brightness and Contrast, and we can lower the brightness. And as you can see, we don't want it to be too dark because we didn't make the background black. We don't want it to be too light. We want it to be just right. I think something around there looks pretty good. I'll hide that value layer and we can save it for later. I'm going to right click on this layer and choose select layer content. I'm going to sample this color that I'm using here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit blue by dragging over to the right. I'll fill with that to change the color. And now we have a nice silhouette for our planet. I'm going to use the layer adjuster just to move this around. I can decide where I want it. I think right there looks kind of nice. Just put it anywhere rather than dead center. Let's right click on that layer again and choose select layer content so that we make sure we're painting within this shape. And let's give this some basic shading. I'm going to go to the airbrushes and choose digital soft pressure airbrush. I'm going to make a really big brush and I'm going to let the brush do the work here. We can use our harmonies panel to make our color a bit lighter. So I'll just make it lighter one shade. I'll think about which direction I want the light to be coming from. I think it makes sense to have it coming from this side. Do a little wiggly stroke like this. And you can see that creates a really nice gradient. If I make my color a little bit brighter and do a little bit more, then you can see it's starting to look three dimensional. I'll make my color even brighter and I'll make my brush smaller. Make my brush smaller again, brighten the color again until I get something that looks really nice and round. I can sample some of this purplish color, dull it down a bit and put some of that on the opposite side as well. This helps this look more spherical. You can deselect that selection with Control D to see what I have. I think that's looking pretty good. Now let's put some stuff on this planet. I'm going to get my selection back by using Select Layer Content. I'll create a new layer and I'll call this Texture. Let's look at some different ways we can add some texture to this planet. I'll select the Dab Stencils category. And let's try flow map burst. I'm going to sample one of these darker colors here from my planet. And I'll just test paint here to see what I get. I think that looks cool, but I want to change the pattern that I get. So I'm going to change the dab stencil to something different. Let's have it be something kind of horizontal like this. That might look cool. And then I want to change my paper texture as well to something that looks maybe more gaseous. Let's experiment with a few different papers here to see what we get. I think I like pebble board. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over this whole thing and then I can reduce the opacity of that layer if I want to blend it in and make it a little bit more subtle. Let's create another layer of texture. We'll just call it texture two for now. I'll select a different brush. Let's say sponges, regular sponge. I'm going to make a really big brush here. Just paint over the whole planet, reduce the opacity of that layer to blend it in. And you can see I can kind of layer this up. We can add lighter textures. I'll create another new layer. We'll name this light texture. I'll set the composite method to screen. We'll just sample our color here. 
paint over it with some lighter textures and reduce the opacity. If we show and hide those layers, you can see the effect that they're having. And let's add some more stuff to this on another new layer. Let's call this magma. Maybe we'll have some cracks or some magma in this. I'm gonna select the particle brushes and we'll choose flow flare. I'm gonna choose a dark red color here and we'll turn on the glow mode. We wanna do a stroke that's just the right speed. You don't wanna stay in one spot for too long because if you do, it's gonna build up to white really fast. So we're doing something kind of like this. Feel free to zigzag it around a bit. This brush is going to be kind of slow and laggy just because it's doing a lot. These little particles are spraying out everywhere. I'll have these kind of fan out, maybe come together and then diverge again. And if you want, you can just kind of tap and hold in a few spots. And just build up these little glows that poke through. If you wanted to, you could even use these on your star layers just to enhance those. You'll have to deselect that selection and you can enhance the stars that way as well if you want them to glow a bit. Let's go ahead and save our artwork. I could have done this earlier, but I'm just focusing on working. Normally I would save more often. I hadn't actually saved my artwork, so if my computer crashed, I would have lost this painting. It's always good to save right off the bat, which I should have done. So let's just save this as space one. Adding this magma took away from the three dimensionality of this sphere. So we may want to reshape that a bit. We can go to the effects category and choose Distorto. I have the green set to nine so that's not too strong. I want to get my selection of the planet back. And then I just want to kind of push up toward the edges to compress some of this and just help it look a little bit more three dimensional. I'm just kind of pulling from the center and compressing it near the edges. Be careful not to pull from the background in toward the center. Control D to deselect. That's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to compress this a bit more. Let's go back to the planet layer, get our selection back, and I'm going to go back to the airbrushes. Let's create a new layer. We'll have it be right above the planet. We'll just call this edge. We'll just lighten the edge a bit here. Control D to deselect. Control Z to go back. I'll lighten it a bit more, I think. This will just help it stand out against the background. Now let's add some details to the planet. I'll create a new layer. And there are really a lot of different brushes you could use for this. I'm gonna use Artist's Sargent brush because it gives you a nice oily look. I'll sample my base color here, make it a bit brighter. I'll just test that on my planet surface here to see if I like it. I think that looks pretty good. I wanna get my selection of the planet back so that I don't accidentally paint off of it. This could just be some land or some features that just look a little bit different. The gesture I'm using here is I'm just kind of wiggling my hand back and forth to get these nice broken edges and varying my pen pressure when I want the features to be smaller or using firmer pressure when I want them to be larger. We can go even lighter with our color. I have a few lighter features on top of that. Maybe even switch to some brownish colors and maybe sample some of the darker blues that we had originally. Go on top of that. We could reduce the opacity of that layer a bit if you want to blend it in and make it more subtle. You may want to deselect your selection and then zoom out a bit. Sometimes it helps to look at your artwork from farther away. Now, if you want to, you can select all of your planet layers and use the layer adjuster just to move it around. That way you can experiment with different locations if you're not happy with it. But I do think I like it down here kind of on the left and the bottom. Let's go to save as and let's save our artwork again. Save this as space three. And while we have all of our layers selected here for our planet, let's merge them down with control E, or you can use the collapse layers command. Now I can go to effects, tonal control, adjust colors. And if I want, I can play with the colors. If they're too light or too dark, then I can tweak them this way. I think the value is actually fine. If they're overly saturated, you can reduce the saturation. I think that's fine but maybe I wanna play with the hue a bit so it's just more complementary to the background. I'm gonna shift it so it's a bit more of a gold color. Let's also create a new layer, set it to screen. I'll go back to the glow brush in the FX category. Now that we've decided on a color for our magma, the sample that orangish hue. I'm gonna kinda of make it glow all along these little veins of magma, but especially where they peek out around the edges 
That way the light looks like it's kind of spilling over. I'm just kind of scrubbing back and forth along these lines. And that just adds a bit of a halo to them like I did with the stars. Now the good thing about saving iterations is if you decide later that maybe you don't like what you did with the colors here and you want to change it back, you can always go back to an older version. I'm going to go ahead and save it here. Save it as space four. And typically I save a lot more when I'm experimenting for that reason, because I may make a change that I don't like, and then I can just easily go back. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those planet layers down again into a single layer. I'm going to set the composite method of the planet layer to gel cover. I'm going to name that layer so that we know what it is. We'll just call it planet glow. And on the planet layer, I'm going to set the composite method to gel cover. And I'll select a blender that is called Diffuser 2. I'm going to paint just right along the edge of the planet. I just went around gently one time. And then here where the edge is being broken up by the magma, I'll paint a bit more in those areas just to break it up. And this just puts the edge a little bit out of focus because objects that are moving away from you in three-dimensional space should get a little bit blurrier. Now I could go on and on adding detail to this, but I want to go ahead and keep this a short lesson so I can just focus on the steps of the workflow. But you can feel free to add as much detail as you want at home. So let's wrap this painting up by adding some color overlay just to bring the colors together. I'll create a new layer. I'll name it Overlay, and I'll set the composite method to Overlay. I'll select a bluish color that complements my background color, and I'll fill that layer with Control F. I'll hunt around for the color that I want here. I don't want it to be too bright because it will over brighten my piece. I don't want it to be too dark because it will over darken it. So just find something that makes the artwork look better, not worse. I think adding some brightness and contrast like this along with some blue tinting really helps. So I'll click on OK. And if it's a bit too strong, I could reduce the opacity. But I think it looks a good kind of strong like that. Let's add another layer. I'll name it Vignette and I'll set the composite method to multiply. I'll select an airbrush called Digital Soft Pressure Airbrush. And I'm just going to vignette the edges by making them darker. And that will draw the eye into the center of the canvas. I may even add some more shadow to the side of the planet. So to do that, I'll go to the planet layer, right click on it, select layer content, create a new layer, set that to multiply. And I'll just paint on the far side of the planet here. You could even add another layer, set that to screen and we could brighten it on the other side and on the back side as well. Control D to deselect, reduce the opacity of those layers until you have a nice balance. And then you can before and after to see the effect that it's having. Let's do our value check just to make sure we're not out of whack here. That's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and save this again. I'll go to save as, save this as space five. Now it's gonna get really crazy here. I'm going to merge all of my layers down. So I'm gonna to go to layers, drop all layers to canvas. Then I'll go to effects, tonal control, adjust colors. Maybe I'm still not happy with the colors. Sometimes it's nice to go in here and just shift the hue on everything. You might see a color scheme that you like better. Like this is looking kind of cool to me. It looks more alien. So even though I changed it from red earlier, making the background a slightly different blue looks more interesting to me. I might desaturate it a bit too, so it's not too overly saturated. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to call this a finished painting. If I wanted to, I could sign it. I recommend that you do that on a separate layer. That way, in case you resize this to a different print size, you can always move that signature around. The brush I like to use for signatures is found in the pens. It's called Scratchboard Tool. I'll just use white this time around because I think that'll go good with the background. I like to just kind of do my initials somewhere where they don't stand out too much. And as you can see, I can take that signature, move it around, or even change the color of it if I like. I'll leave the signature off of this piece, and we can go ahead and save our final copy. I'll go to Save As. You could call this Space 6 Final or whatever you like. I'm just going to call it Space 6. And this is our master copy. We have all the previous versions with all of our layers in case we ever want to go back to those. And then if we wanted to print this, We'll need to go to Save As again and save in a format that we can print. Typically that would be TIFF, PNG, or JPEG, but you may also be able to print from a PSD if you're printing at home. TIFF is the best quality for print, PNG is second, and JPEG is third, but you may find that a lot of online printers want you to use JPEG, so let's just do that for example's sake. 
I'm gonna call this space six print. That way we know it's the print version. I'm not saving over my original. This is a copy. I'll make it excellent quality and I'll go ahead and save it. This will reduce the image quality a little bit. Let's save another copy by going to save as. Let's say we're gonna post this one to the web. Now, before we do that, we could make the image smaller. If we go to resize, we can see it's 3000 by 2400 pixels. That's pretty big and maybe too big for the web. In fact, you don't wanna put up your high resolution artwork because then people can download it and resell it. So I'd recommend making a smaller copy for the web. Let's say we only want this to be 1200 wide. Resolution doesn't matter because we're posting to the web. We'll click OK. Now we have a smaller version. We can go to Save As and save this as Space 6 Web. We could save that as a PNG or JPEG. It doesn't matter. We'll just save it as a JPEG. And now if I go to my art folder, you can see I have all of my original saves here. Then I have a print version of my artwork and a web version of my artwork. And then to tidy things up, I'll even put all this stuff in a folder called Space because it's good to keep your digital art organized. And with that, we have a finished painting. That brings us to the end of this course. Congratulations on making it through. I hope you learned a lot about working with Corel Painter Essentials and you're now more comfortable creating digital art. If you'd like to expand on what you learned in this course, I have some free tutorials on YouTube for Corel Painter Essentials 8 and tons of tutorials for the full version of Corel Painter. Although Corel Painter Essentials is the lighter version of Corel Painter, you may be able to still follow along with a lot of these tutorials. I also have paid courses that go in depth into the full version of Corel Painter that you may be able to learn a lot from as well. So check those out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.